I wanted to cover a little bit about what this is doing here when Docker Compose is creating a volume. Now here I just have named this volume data. The word data here doesn't really have any other special significance. The fact that I'm using this volume to store data is just a coincidence. That's just why I named it data. Now over here I have my container still running so I could go to localhost and still see my PHP application. Now one thing I wanted to show you is my volume that got created. So if I go to docker volume and ls to list out the current volumes, we can see that I have a few. One of them is this one named data. Now it's called php app underscore data because I'm in the php app directory and that is a convention that docker compose does when it creates networks, volumes, and other artifacts that are related to the docker compose file configuration. So we have a volume here called php app data and that is connected to the MySQL container. So remember up here we have our MySQL container that's named DB and it is connected to the data volume created here and that is sharing the varlib MySQL directory. So stuff inside of varlib MySQL inside of the container gets saved to our local data directory. All right, so I'm gonna go to Docker PS to list our, our writing containers. I see I have my MySQL one here. It is named PHP app DB1 or this hash. Let's do docker inspect. I'm going to do that hash and I'm going to pipe it out to JQ, which I happen to have installed, which gives Jason here a little bit of a nice formatting. I'll scroll up here and there'll be a few things to point out. First, we have mounts and we can see that the source here is var lib docker volumes php app data data. So this is the volume that is created on the local system when we create a named volume. And the destination here is var lib mysql. Now I'm inspecting the MySQL container specifically, so this is saying the destination in the container we just inspected is going to be varlib MySQL, and it's going to use the volume named data. So let's just copy this file path and scroll up a little bit. We'll also see this data sort of repeated here with binds because we're binding the data volume named uh, data or PHP app data to the varlib MySQL. That's just saying the same thing a different way. Now, that data should be on my local computer, but no such file or directory. Now, this is a little awkward to talk about on our Macintosh or Windows using Docker because there's a layer of virtualization. Docker isn't running directly on my Macintosh here. It's actually running inside of a little virtualized environment. So the varlib docker volumes php app data underscore data directory actually lives inside of that virtualization, not directly on my Macintosh. So I can't actually go into it. So let's head over here. I am in a Ubuntu server. It's Ubuntu 16.04. This happens to be a server spun up on DigitalOcean. I have Docker installed and Docker Compose. This will be the same versions running my Macintosh or near enough. So one thing I'm going to do here is create a Docker Compose file. And this is going to be very similar, but simple. I'm just creating a DB MySQL container here. It has the same environment variables. It creates a same volume named data, local once again, shared to varlib MySQL once again. I'm going to do docker compose up. I'm not going to do the dash D flag because I want us to see the logs output when we start up a MySQL container. All right, great. So it's downloaded the image. It's starting it up. It's initializing it. Up here we'll see MySQL or database initialized in a process in progress. So we created a volume, but the volume is empty. The MySQL container sees that and it initializes the database. All right, so now this is actually running and started, but we have this in the foreground. So one thing I'm going to do here is just control C to get out of it. It's actually going to stop that container. So if I do docker ps, it's not there. If I do ps dash a to show stopped containers as well, it's here. So we can do docker inspect. Actually, let's do this. We'll do docker volume ls and we see we have root data. So I'm in the root directory. That's why this one's root, but I've named it data inside of that docker compose file. So we can see that we have this volume. Now let's do docker inspect the container there that is using it. We'll go up to mounts and we see that root data is using varlib docker volumes root data data. So let's copy and paste that and we can list that out. Now here we see that docker is running directly on this Ubuntu server. There's no layer of virtualization between the host server Ubuntu and docker, which is the case with the Macintosh. So what we can see here is Docker has set this up so that this works. And inside of the data directory, we have the varlib MySQL content of the container. So inside of the container, inside of varlib MySQL is this content. And because we've done the sharing with this volume, this is actually also on the host system. So 
the container is off right now, but that doesn't mean the volume goes away. It still has all the MySQL data. So let's see, we have Docker PS that's not running. Let's start it. Oops, that's the wrong paste. Let's restart that container. So do Docker start and the container name that started. If I do Docker PS, we see that it's running. If I do Docker compose, let's see if that knows about it. All right, Docker compose can see that it's running as well. So let's do some stuff to this. I'm gonna do docker exec dash it. So we're gonna execute a command inside of it. IT will make it interactive. I wanna do this container, root db1, and I'm gonna uh, run bash. So we've made it interactive, we're running bash. So I'm running bash inside of our container. So if I go to var lib mysql, we'll see our data here as well. It's gonna do return a few times to get it cleared out a little bit, as much as we can here. Let's do mysql or connect as user root dash p, that password we made was secret, so I'll enter that. And let's see, show databases. There's uh, the database homestead, which is the one it created. And I'm actually gonna create a new database. So create database fideloper, caraset, utf8, mb4, utf8, mb4, we'll show databases. We can see that that exists. So let's exit this. I'll exit this container as well. We'll see it's still running. Let's do docker compose down. All right, so docker compose destroyed the network. It stopped and destroyed the container. If I do docker ps-a, we see there's no container there. If I list out the volumes, we'll see that data volume is still there. Now we can do docker volume inspect root data as well to get information about this volume specifically, and we can see it's still in varlib docker and so forth. Let's list out the items in there. We can see our database still exists there. Beautiful. So if I do docker compose up, dash D this time, this is going to recreate the container, it has restarted it, and it's reusing that same named volume. So let's do docker ps once again, we'll see this is the container ID, or I could just use root db1. We'll do docker exec once again. So inside of this container, I'm going to run bash once again. Let's reconnect it to MySQL, show databases, and we can see our database fideloper and homestead are still there. So volumes are really nice because they persist data to the local file system. They're a little awkward to work with on your Macintosh or Windows because there's that layer of virtualization, but in a production environment where Docker is typically running on the host system directly without a layer of virtualization between it, we can see that Docker volumes are a very handy tool for you to use.